and salvage onto it. <laughs> Drew takes the high road to Edinburgh and has hearing trouble as he bargains for an American beauty. It's got five and he could have it for 300 quid. What did he say, 250? At an airport in Kent, he finds a wartime swinger. I've got to have that in my life, just for a bit. Illuminate, illuminate. <laughs> and in a Somerset shop, he tries to do a deal on a designer desk. I'm not going to be rude. No. Don't take it the wrong way. No, no. 1,500 quid. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Well, that's pretty spectacular. Oh, God, that's fantastic. Beautiful. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. For treasure, he bargains hard. 9.50. It's too much money. You're going for 600 quid. Yeah. Yeah. Done. And there's nothing he won't buy. Oh, yeah, look at that. I love him. With help from Rebecca... That's really cool. Nice, isn't it? I love it. And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. At the warehouse in North Wales... Magic. Drew Pritchard's team know that popular items that come in don't hang around for long. The cognac chairs. Sold. Just got them. Fab. With a worldwide following, his distinctive quality pieces are always in demand. And after years of experience, the team all know what kind of... Tables and chairs. People just can't get enough of them at the moment. People always say to me, what's your best sellers? What should I be buying and selling now? We concentrate on a few things, which are seating, cabinetry, tables and lighting. Everything else comes in and around that. What I look for in everything is good design, cool factor, quality manufacture and originality. Those are the four things that I'm looking for constantly. And those four things, no matter what they may be with, are the best sellers. So that's what our customers expect from us. Drew has to go out with two hats on. One, to find the obvious bankers and the unusual finds. Edinburgh. Right, T, one of my favourite cities in the world. Yes, my two. Edinburgh. <laughs> During the Enlightenment, yes. Thomas Reed mm. started the Scottish School of Common Sense. Get out of town. Seriously? You're joking. Yeah, we didn't have one of those in Wales, did we? No. no. <laughs> we still haven't got one. <laughs> Modern-day Edinburgh began life in the 1760s as the result of a city planning competition. Today, it's known for great architecture and fantastic views, and it's one of Drew's favourite trawling grounds for top-quality antiques. So we're off to see Lewis Rosa. Oh, good. We've been to meet him before. Yeah, I like Do you him. remember the one who called me a ginger with a hint of ninja yeah, or a ninja with a hint of ginger? I, specifically, I think I liked it. Drew first met Lewis on a memorable visit to Edinburgh over two... Behind things where he's hidden. <laughs> <laughs> he'd hidden his favourite things last time. So we didn't buy him. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> he's, a, he's much more of a mind to sell now, which he wasn't before. 21 years ago, in an old Edinburgh warehouse, Lewis Rosa set up Courtyard Antiques. When I first started, I was selling lots of wardrobes, chests of drawers, that kind of stuff. Um, and then with the money I got from that, I would go out and buy something I liked. And then the wardrobes dwindled and the aeroplane parts and the motorbikes took over. People come in and say this is like a museum, but if they actually bought something, it would be more like a shop which would be good for everybody. <laughs> Lewis is thinking of downsizing to smaller premises, so he's in the mood to do deals. And do he, he knows what people want to buy and he concentrates on that. I do have some real bread and butter stuff here that Drew knows he can sell. Hopefully he'll scoop up a lot of that. Drew, tea. Hello again, how are you? Great to see you both Thank again. You. Yeah. You well? Thank you. Thank you. yeah, great. Right, let's go in. Let's see go. what you've got. It's still great in here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you don't know where to start again, do you? Even though you've been it's here like before. The, the best, the best boys' toy shop in the world, isn't it? I love it. Walking through the door, and instantly you sort of have to start like looking straight. You can be chatting, but you better get looking because there's loads to see. There's so much stuff. Oh God, look at that. I've been to Lewis's place. 
What about these here? These got the original chain on those as well. Yep. How many you got? Four. Four. Lights are a favourite of Drew's because they always sell quickly. These Opaline glass light shades have brass monk's cap fittings. Opaline comes from the word opalescent and describes the skimmed milk quality of the glass which acts as a light diffuser. These could be worth around £225 each. Best selling Opaline to me are the Globes. They really do just sell easily because they're incredibly stylish and you can put them in all sorts of settings so they can go in very, very posh restaurants or they can just go in your home. There's a good even number of them and the best thing about them is they've taken them as they are. Um, 390. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'll those. Yeah, keep The interior decorators and the shop fitters, they're always looking for runs of lamps from me. And I want sure things. Walk out stock is what I'm after. I'll tell you what I do quite like. I'm not, these, these. Are you selling these now or not? Yeah. Any broken glass or anything no, on them? No, nothing. Perfect. Nothing to do. Nothing to do Bar at all. Clean, clean and a wipe. Display cases. I've always got five to ten in stock minimum. These glazed display counters date from the. Each have a single mirrored door and a parquetry base with an adjustable glass shelf. They're designed to be used separately or together to form one counter. They could be worth around £2,750. They've got this lovely marquetry base, really good quality door, all the original glass, and they're a pair. I'd be excited to find one, but to get two? Over the moon, fantastic. That, that's why you come to guys like this. Are they here, these here last time? They have no, no. Well, no, it, it was... I, I, I bought them maybe two years ago. And I wasn't selling them, they were just um, display for me to use, but I would do the, them both for 15. Can, can we do... Marvellous. Yeah, lovely. They're, they're fab, aren't they? Great things. £700 each. Yes. Very happy with that. They'll go into re the retail fashion world straight away. They're, they're, they're a no-brainer. With two bestsellers already bagged, Drew continues to shop for stock. But Lewis's items appeal to his heart as well. Oh, there's this thing. I think we had words about this last time I was here as well. This, I love this. I can't quite remember the price on it. I remember you, I left you, it. I wanted eight and you offered me five. We could agree on six. I'd probably start now at three. He's revisiting the fascinating courtyard antiques. It's still great in here, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it's like the best boys' toy shop in the world. Drew's just seen a model Zeppelin he tried to buy from owner Lewis on his last visit. I love this. I wanted eight and you offered me five. We could agree on six. I'd probably start now at three. Sorry. <laughs> I just love it. It's great. Do you know anything about it? Did you pick this up in the States? Yeah. I bought that in a fair in America and I saw it. It was like, you know, a big field. And I saw it from like 200 Far. yards. Really? This is a model of the Graf Zeppelin, a German airship that operated commercial flights between Europe and the Americas from 1928 to 1937. Science. But this is probably homemade. It's made of steel plates and secured with metal rivets and could be worth around £750. It's funky, industrial looking. It looks like it's been homemade. And then you look at the colour and the patina of it and you're like, wow, look at this. Look at the colour of this thing. 550. Oh, come on. Meet halfway. I don't see there's much profit left in it for that because, I mean, how long have you had it? You don't want to sell it though, do you, really? Well, I would quite like to sell it. But not for 300 quid. Mm. You have to try, though, don't you? No. <laughs> Dude, it's my nature. I can't help it. 
kan that's it marvelous Drew has finally bought the Zeppelin and already has plans on how to turn it into a bestseller as I say a bit of desk art so it needs to be put on a mount you could just put this on the end of your desk and I can guarantee you one thing nobody else is going to have one and that's that's rare would you go and hire if it was made out of lead <laughs> no. been lead Zeppelin <laughs> God. you're all right I have to stick I, I'm stuck with them all the time what I love about this shop is it's just it's so eclectic and it has layers and it's deep fascinating and there's stuff and there's stuff and there's stuff and there's more and you keep going have you still got stuff upstairs yeah it's brilliantly simple and also incredibly clever at the same time cool so should we have a look upstairs yeah Drew has travelled nearly 300 miles and wants to fill the van with best-selling items. Thankfully, Lewis has plenty more goods to sell on the second floor. How much is this thing? Um, 90 quid. <laughs> See, even him, even, even that <laughs> no, upset him. <laughs> Gosh, sorry. No, can't get there. Do it, please. <laughs> this is a beautiful looking thing. Oh, wow, look at that. And it works. What a noise it makes. Oh, terrible noise. 1949 La France American ladder firing, fire truck siren and light. No, it's not working for me. Nutty things now. Yeah. It takes a practiced eye to spot the unusual piece that's also a banker. £125 each. No. no, 25 pounds. Thinking bloody hell. So these are for just when you open the shop door and they just spring back. These old fashioned shop doorbells are Scottish and date from the early 20th century. They have steel springs and brass bells with cast iron clappers, which would ring loudly whenever the shop door was opened and closed. They could be worth around 70 pounds each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A lot less. <laughs> it's a lot less, yeah. How many is there? Eight. Eight. All right, OK, hundred. Cool, I like those. Bought myself a lovely little pile of profit there. People are still opening shops. And what do all shops look like these days? They all look retro, don't they? It's quite nice, isn't it, to walk in and hear that bell going off. Drew is finding best sellers that are ticking every box, from the solid bankers to the quality one-off items that are always in high demand. Oh, I like the bike. Is that an original? Yeah, 1940. Did you buy this in the States, one of your, one of your finds? It's always the girls' bikes, aren't they, that aren't so battered. Hassles. Then the original pedals are on. Says, well, they've got hardly anywhere. There's very little damage to it, and it's complete. So all of all the little side panels, you know, the faux sort of fuel tank, it's all there. All the screws are there. Nothing's missing, including the sort of Buck Rogers-esque lamp on the front of it, and it's original lens. I mean, this thing's just getting better and better and better. This girl's bicycle dates from 1940 and was made by the Columbia Bike Factory in Westfield, Massachusetts. This deluxe model has a lot of desirable extras. It could be worth around £600. It's got five and you could have it for three. 295, that sounds so much better. To buy it and ship it from America. 290. 290. That's the original saddle and everything. Yeah. And it's definitely 1940. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Definitely. Certainly looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a stylish and fun thing, but it's also a place in time. Bigger is better, more is good. That's what that bite takes you. Bit of window art, isn't it, for the shop? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's the sort of thing, it's the sort yeah. of fun thing. Cool. Well, yeah, we're done. Probably. Let's start loading it up. It's going to take a while. For sure. Today was great. The second visit to, to Lewis's place here at Courtyard Antiques, and um, yeah, it, it's exactly what I hoped it would be. The standout item today, the display cases. It was great fun. 
He knows what he needs at any particular given moment. Well, I like to let the Zeppelin, and it's nice to sell it to somebody else who appreciates it. All in all, a really, really good and worthwhile trip. Lewis, thank Thanks you. So much. A pleasure. Lovely to meet you again. Nice yeah, yeah. Nice to Look see you. Thanks. We'll see, we will see you again. It's a long drive home to Wales, where it's time to unveil their Scottish Hall. How is Edinburgh? Lovely as ever. We like Edinburgh. Oh, lucky you. Yeah. Look at this. Sorry. Carl, you don't need to do anything. You already done. Four opalites. They've all been just been tested. 390 quid for four. That's fine. Since day one, the day Drew stops buying lighting, I fall off my stool. I can see something, something with wheels. There you go. Look at this. <laughs> Drew feels the bike is going to make a great item in a sort of retail shop window. I actually see this being bought to be used. I think there's a girl out there that would love to ride it every day. This was something I tried to buy off him last time I was there, which I think is a bit special. I think it's fabulous. Is it exactly sort of thing? Yeah. Yes. I want stand making. Yeah. I see it on somebody's desk. It never surprises me what on earth he's going to come back with. It's always fascinating. Right, get rid of them, guys. Get them model that just hung around to a saleable piece of desk art. But that's easier said than done. Drew's bought this, but he wants it mounting. But without damaging it at all. There is a little hole under it we can utilise. Carl is going to mount the Zeppelin on a flat piece of steel. Right. Into which he's inserted and welded a length of metal rod. Beautiful. His idea is to sit the model on a metal cradle, which he makes out of two smaller pieces of flat steel welded together. I think we're going to get there. Next, Carl marks the height he wants by eye. Somehow I've got to weld that onto there at 30 degrees and keep it level that way. He spot welds the two support plates on top of the rod, then uses an adapted bolt as a centre point for the Zeppelin to sit on. That fits into the original hole on the underside. If Carl's plan works, the Zeppelin will be steady but look as though it's ready for takeoff. some felt at the bottom and then give it to a Larry. Okay, sold. Knowing his latest purchaser. Wookie Hole in Somerset is a tourist centre famous for its extensive limestone cave system in which the remains of prehistoric lions and hyenas have been found. Drew's returning to a favourite dealer who provided him with a bounty of bestsellers a few years ago. Just on the, well, on the cusp of Wookie Hole, there is a guy called Raj down there who runs Chapel Antiques. Uh, I stopped there a few years ago, walked in, I bought half the shop. Good hey, stuff then. Just great. The guy has got a superb eye. 20 years ago, Raj Rastegi changed his life by leaving London and setting up an antique shop in an old chapel. Well, my previous life, well, I mean, a strong comparison between the world of theatre and the antique world. There's, you know, a lot of interesting characters. It's like building a set, you know, you're, you're lighting it, getting the balance right. I think the best items that I sell are generally the ones, the pieces that I really like myself. It's that that really sort of are the best sellers, really. Hi there. Hi. 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 Hi.
It's a great look. I love it. There's just great stuff here. So I just start firing. Nothing's priced. Shall I just start firing off? Please do. What I'm always looking for are my sort of bestsellers list. So I'm looking for good office chairs, nice desks, good desk lights, nice decoration, good paintings. All of these regular things I can sell like that. Love the desk. Tell me about this. Right. Uh, designed by Jorgen Kastholm. He, the interesting thing is Care he, he got yeah. the Gordon Russell team to actually make it right. and sell it. 60s? It's or 79. Earlier. 79. This oak and chrome desk is the result of a collaboration between two celebrated names in mid-century furniture. A famous British company. It's a classic piece and could be worth around £2,900. It's got all of the things that I'm looking for. Fabulous style. Totally original. I've never seen one before and the quality is superb. What Good sort of time. what sort of price are you looking at for that? I need to get as close to two nine two thousand nine hundred pounds. I want to. It. it has to come home with me. Decorative salvage expert Drew Pritchard is in Chapel Antiques in Somerset. Now you're talking. Oh yeah. He's on the hunt for best-selling items, and he's bargaining for a designer desk with owner Raj. Apparently, there's only about 50 of these made. I need to get as close to two nine, two thousand nine hundred pounds for this. Okay, I can't get there. Yeah, okay. I can't get there. I thought I'm gonna have to pay twelve to fifteen hundred pounds for the desk, and Raj comes out with two nine, and I thought I completely get it. I totally understand it. Uh, that's fine, but I, I, I can't pay that. There's nothing, there's nowhere left to go. I might make a little bit if I'm lucky long term. Something may be a bestseller, but it's no good to Drew if he can't make a profit. The chairs are nice as well. What sort of price are they? And tell me about those. Right. Um, they're again, I think they're actually English made. Yeah. They're sort of that sort of Danish style. Under the desk, looking very at home, there's a pair of green leather and cast alloy at the moment. It's just a good colour, but those have got it all. This pair of boardroom chairs are from the early 1970s and upholstered in a soft and durable leather. It's thought they're designed by the German firm Vilkan, who are famous for high-quality office furniture. They could be worth around £275 each. That's good. We can do those for uh, uh, 140 each. Okay. Sold. These are exactly what I'm talking about as the best, Stella. I could buy and sell these all day long. That's nice as well, isn't it? It is. Chapel Antiques is full of Raj's bold one-off pieces. This is phenomenal, isn't it? Does it work? It's or bonkers. Because it was obviously for the, the hairdressers, you know. Is that what it is? Yeah, the women used to have the fall in their hairs and the heat set off the chemicals. What I won't buy is things that are just oddments. It's just for your um, umbrellas. Umbrella. I've never seen one like it before. No. So yeah, interesting. People go, oh, isn't that strange, isn't it odd? And you think, yeah, it's really odd. And it's going to sit in my warehouse gathering dust for years, and you don't want that. I'm not looking for quirky, I'm looking for the unique in a way that something would be quite ordinary, but the way it's been painted or used could have made it unique. That's great. The... Plaster figure. Yes, 1910, I should imagine, sort of yeah. artist figure. This plaster of Paris statue is an early 20... Before this time, statues represented mythical beings and gods. But with the birth of democracy, sculptors began to make images of humans. This could be worth around £500. Damage does detract a bit, doesn't it? It does. It's terrible. We do that one for uh, 190. 190? Yes. Great. So, lovely. Raj's prices are high, low. There doesn't seem to be much middle ground. That one's 190 pounds when he ripped his arm off. Been left outside for a period of time. And the metal armature that the plaster has been built around has expanded and just popped the plaster off. It doesn't detract. He's still a good looking boy. 
to reflect there's something he wants to revisit. Still keep going back to this desk. What was your 2009? I think I can get. No, I can't. I, I, I wouldn't get that. I'm not going to be rude. No. Don't take it the wrong way. No, no. I am going to give you a bid on it. Okay. To see exactly where we are with it. No, just so you are. Okay. 1500 quid. Gone. Yeah. I th Today, paid, finished, done, at the door. I think I'd need close to the two. Just, I can't get there. There's just not enough in it for no. me. Well, it's certainly a beautifully made piece, but I have to lessen his expectations on it fairly... No, not fairly, hugely. It's going to have to be 1800. Do you want to think about it for a while? I can't. No, it. I'm sort of no I think I'm 1800, done. I'm happy to do that. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Happy, 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 happy. There's no restoration work at all, and if I can actually get a letter of authentication on it as well, that will really add to it. Right. Um, you got anywhere else we can just have a look at? Yes, downstairs. We have right. look downstairs. Is that open to the public normally? No, no, this is uh, especially for you, Drew. This <laughs> <time>. <laughs> Drew loves a chance to go backstage at a dealer's. He can spot a banker before it goes on sale to the public, and often at a very good price. Look at those. Okay. Yeah, cast iron, I've seen those before. We're down in the cellar now, and the next door he does all this restoration, there's just stuff chucked in here. But on the floor there's a pair of cast iron, faux bamboo cafe table bases with no tops on them. I really like them. But these have got really nice, deep registration marks on them, and they've got original paint, and there's a pair. These cast-iron table legs are moulded and painted to resemble bamboo. The registration stamp means this was a proprietary design, made to be mass-produced. They date from the Belle Epoque period, around 1900. With a top, they could be worth around £350 each. How much are they? Um, do they? Just as they are. Yeah, uh, just as, as they are. As they are. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got the tops. OK, good. Yeah. Cast-iron table bases always traditionally sell really well. These ones should sell particularly well because they're so stylish. Perfect for city centre restaurants when people can sit outside. Right, um... Load the van. OK. The heavy desk. Right, up we go. Yeah. A couple of standout items today. One, obviously, the desk one of 50 potentially fabulous original condition amazing scale there's nothing in the antiques business that's a dead cert that's for sure but what you try and do is try and get things that are as pretty close to it as you can and a couple of them there desk chairs and the anatomical model they're all things people really want all of the time the scene almost for what you know is current what people should be buying and I think it's a uh... It's actually been a great help to the industry, showing how things can be used. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it. Thank you. Really good. Thank you. At Salvage HQ, all hands are standing by to unload. Sorry, on Hello. the phone. Oh, selling things, I hope. Yeah, actually. You need to, because I've spent a few quid. Pair of leather, 70s. They're, they're very stylish. 280 the pair. Fantastic. Desk chairs have become one of our best sellers. Um, it's because now everybody has a laptop. Um, everybody needs a really comfy chair. So it was great to see him come back with two leather. Does it? That, oh. That's that badly damaged. It's cool. Exactly. Yeah. 190 quid. The plaster figure works really well. I mean, it's virtually falling to bits. It's showing its sort of steel rods inside, and that makes it absolutely charming. I love the way you can see the exposed steel, actually. Yeah, the I think it the makes armature it. inside it. This looks stunning. Yeah, I can't... It's by Uben... Uben, Uben, I don't know, I can't remember the name of the guy. OK. It's um, oh, yeah. one of those um, Danish yeah. jobs. The Gordon Russell office desk is drop-dead gorgeous. The proportions are unbelievable. The 
sort of detail, sort of best sellers, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've These got are chairs, we've got tables. Desks, tables. Bit of everything. Bit of everything. Nice, straightforward one. Well worth the trip. Rebecca gets straight on to authenticating the desk. Raj from Chapel Antiques said to Drew that somewhere he had the certificate of authenticity and that he'd wing it over to us. And uh, bingo, it's come through. The certificate um, of provenance um, is actually from the Gordon Russell Design Museum. To actually have the certificate is... Not necessarily it increases its value. You just know that if you're a buyer and you're going to invest in that table. Antiques expert Drew Pritchard and his wingman T are bombing off on another mission to buy best-selling items. Their target destination, Rochester Airport in Kent. Their aim, to buy popular pieces with provenance. They used to build bombers on this site in the building that uh, they are about to remodel. They're ripping out the guts that wear the factory and, well, that's why we're here. They're always full of loads of lights and big workbenches, but what I'm looking for is something that connects the, the history of the Second World War to whatever we're buying. Rochester Airport lies a few miles from the Kent coast, during this to various companies under the banner of British Aerospace. Now it's a private airfield, about to be renovated under the watchful eye of business manager Paul Britton. The hangar was built about 80 years ago. It's been deteriorating over the years. It's concrete and asbestos clad, so we're stripping all the cladding off, but the frame will be staying as it is. It's a beautiful frame. They don't make them like this anymore, so it'll be nice to be able to keep that. Paul has asked Drew to come and have a look around before the refurbishment begins. We inherited a huge amount of... I won't call it rubbish, some of it is rubbish, but we, we inherited all the equipment as well. Uh, British Aerospace left it all behind. We haven't done much with it, but we're going to have to uh, dispose of it. Blimey, how quick is he coming in? I'm Drew. Drew. I'm Paul. Paul. Hi, Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, T. Hi, I'm Paul. Yeah, Thanks hi. for having us. That's OK. Nice day. Right. Beautiful day. So how many planes do you get in and out of here in a day, then? Uh, well, on a busy day, you can get three to four hundred. Really? That's no. unusual. So whose are all these? These are all privately owned or group owned. Cost a fortune, I should imagine. Not necessarily. The price of a, a decent car, some of them. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. God, it's fun here, isn't it? <laughs> it's great. First thoughts today coming into the airport. I really like it. Not that keen on planes, but I do. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely fantastic. I can imagine all the Spitfires taking off here in Lancaster's and the war era, and oh, it's fab. We could sit here all day watching this. We we could be in for a bit of luck here. Um, unusual places usually bring unusual items, or at least different pieces. There's an awful lot of people who collect anything to do with the Second World War and also to do with the planes, particularly the, the, the bombers and the fighters. So we could get lucky. Where are we going to now? We're going in here next. <laughs> Paul knows of Drew's love of lights and is about to supersize him. That's great. So I just put it in the van now. Yeah, so just in the done. van. Done. Sold. What a thing. That ratchet doesn't like work. You were talking, it does. Trying to pull, pull it. In. it. Oh, what? <laughs> That's the ultimate death. This is line. the ultimate angle for us. I'm guessing it's an old engineer's lamp. I don't know. It's for working at distance, so say if somebody's in an engine. Yeah. They've got it. They can bring they it can right bring over, right over, right over, right, right over the top of it. But it's, uh, it's quite a bit of engineering, isn't it? For it is. A it's light completely that... over the top, isn't it? <laughs> Love it. So that light definitely is from this factory for working on, say, the engines of the bomber. This huge telescopic work light is mounted on a tripod base with casters. It's capable of extending to 15 feet by means of a ratcheted wheel. It's very unusual and could be worth around £1,000. What a fantastic provenance there. Absolutely superb. Couldn't be better. Fair bit of work to do. 
Oh, yeah. Three fifty. Salt. Harvest. Drew's bag just what he hoped for. A unique piece with a real connection to the location. What's wrap? Rochester Airport. Oh, yeah. Apps, no, but absolutely everything was, we find that's metal is stenciled with RAP. Love it. You can do Dalek impressions with it as well, look. <laughs> illuminate! Illuminate! <laughs> with one goodbye under his belt, Drew moves off to look around the rest of the airport. This way. Which proves to be a network of odd spaces and disused cupboards. We inherited all the stuff. Oh my, look at that in there. We inherited the whole lot. When was the last time you were up here then, Bob? Uh, never. <laughs> Finding potential best-selling items here is like looking for a needle in a haystack. I think you're right. Do you know when you said it was junk? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> OK, no mind, Dave. Next place, please. OK. OK, this way. Go, <laughs> that way. <laughs> oh, look at that. These are the old uh, engineer's blackboards. OK. So tell me about these, then. Fuel yeah. state. Um, Aircraft name, fuel state, date. This is typically what the engineer would use, yeah. and that's where they kept how much they had in the tanks. These blackboards were designed for engineers to log the fuel levels as took over. They're an unusual and specific part of Rochester Airport's history. They could be worth around £200 each. Now, blackboards are something people love. I've got one in my own kitchen, and I write on it, oh, oh, I need beans and toothpaste and bin liners and dishwasher tablets and dog food. You forget, so that, that's what they tend to go to now, restaurants and people's kitchens. One offer for the pair, 150. Done, that's it. I'm not going to pay any more. Yeah. Happy? Done. Nice. The fact that blackboards have got their lettering on them, well, it makes them saleable. Otherwise, they're black bits of wood, which are still a blackboard but very dull. It's obviously he. For the blackboards, I'm gobsmacked. Who'd have thought two blackboards would have been worth £150? So I guess it's all about uh, someone's vision rather than my perception of them, which is probably their rubbish. OK. So. Mate, thank you. Pleasure. I've enjoyed it. Enjoyed <laughs> thank it. you. It's been, been fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Really thank, enjoyed you. It. thank you. See you thank you. Bye. 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 Oh, well, that was fascinating. Really, really good. And I'm very, very pleased with that big lamp. The sort of thing somebody's going to buy because they fall in love with it and get it home and can't get it through the front door. It's a long drive back to Llandidno, where the huge work light went straight into the workshop with Carl. That's cool. Heavy engineering. I like that. It's now on the website and waiting for a buyer with a very tall room. Strong group snapped up the set of opaline lamps, the statue and the doorbells. The office chairs from Chapel Antiques sold to a private customer in Surrey. And the blackboards from Rochester Airport flew off to a client in Mallorca. What being able to sell things well and quickly does for me, it gives me a turnover of ready money that allows me to go out there and take chances on the more unusual. The model Zeppelin that hung in Courtyard Antiques went to a buyer in Iceland. And sadly for someone, one of Drew's other buys sold a little too quickly. That's the problem with the items that I like in this place. Other people like them too, and they get sold. The American bicycle Rebecca had her eye on sold within weeks. For me, it might not sell with somebody else at all, you know, and we prove that every day.